Well, South Africa's employment statistics uh, jobs generally an all-time low since uh, 2003. And we take a look now at this uh, serious issue. Joining us are Daniel Hatfield, MD of Edge Growth, Tracy Hacklin, CEO of Columba, and Piwa Nkambule, who is co-founder and CEO of Riovic. Well, Tracy, let's start with you. We've got these numbers which sit stubbornly at 25, 26, 27. If there's a slight variation, it actually doesn't seem to make much difference. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's the number of young people coming on the market every year, youth unemployment much worse than 27%. Absolutely. And I think from, from Columbus' point of view, it's really important that we start intervening really early. You know, the education system is not, is not helping young people develop the kind of skills that they need to actually progress after school. Um, and so we need to think of some innovative ways of helping young people develop those skills, including becoming much more socially entrepreneurial. So let's just, before we go on to the others, what have you been doing? So Columba runs a, a program with high schools. We work in partnership with youth and with, with high schools um, around the country, all in economically disadvantaged areas. And for two years, these young people actually become involved in a leadership program. But it's very practical in nature. And these young people actually tackle social challenges. And in the process, they develop a whole range of really important skills. Mm. Well, uh, Piwa, um, Trace is talking about uh, being more innovative in order to get all these young people into the jobs market. What is Ryovic doing in order to help decrease this unemployment rate that we are seeing within the uh, youth? All right, okay. What we've done is um, we've launched a platform that allows young people or even old people, South African people, to, to acquire human capital, which is the intellectual skills and, um, and knowledge. So what happens is they go on the platform, they enroll in whatever program or course, and then they're given a project to work on. So they get practical experience on their own and get to research and learn about um, fields that are actually threatening jobs like artificial intelligence, um, internet of things, digital manufacturing, and basically those, those industries. Daniel, Edge Growth, what are you doing? So we started 10 years ago uh, with a central mission to create jobs through growing small businesses. And I think we've collected a few scars over the years. Not every model methodology we've tried has, has worked. Um, we see access to skills, access to finance, and access to markets as being the three big levers which we can help businesses with. We work with large corporates, and we try and establish ESD programs, enterprise and supply development programs, which enable small businesses to integrate into supply chains. That's the markets we talk about. And then we've raised capital and we deploy very customized capital into these businesses and the right sort of skills depending on the size and stage of the business to accelerate growth. We really believe that one of the biggest levers we have to create jobs in this economy is growing small businesses. And so that's really where we focus our energy from a job creation perspective. Uh, yeah. They talk about the growing the small business being or the small business being the heartbeat of our nation. When you go to these different schools and you talk to the young people, those in universities, schools and whatever, are they looking to start their own businesses or do they want to go to established businesses? Because there's a massive change right now where people don't actually want to go for work to work for uh, established companies right now. Mm. Uh, certainly in our experience, um, and it's partly because of the kind of program that, that we run, young people are really motivated to go back into their communities and serve in some way, bring about positive change. And so they are very, very eager to set up their own businesses um, or their own initiatives that can actually have a, a social impact. Um, certainly there are some that obviously want to go into, into formal employment. Um, a lot of our graduates actually go into uh, further study, but this, this service mindset, this desire to serve communities is a massive thing. And for us, there's a market there. So I'm, I'll perhaps get your, all of your view on this. Uh, there's a lot going on. Mm. You are three different enterprises. It sounds so good, and mm. clearly you are making things happen. There are other organizations. There's the Small Business Development Corporation. There's lots of big corporates who have enterprise development mm. operations. Why aren't we getting this 27% uh, down? Yeah. Okay, what I, th what I think the problem is in South Africa is at the moment we've got people that have a resource economy mindset instead of a, a knowledge economy mindset like the US and, and other developed countries. So when a person thinks about studying a business, you know, we've got the land question, you know, they're thinking about 
assets, we need to get something before we can start. But you don't have people that are able of thinking of ideas and maybe creating a product that's intangible and then selling that. So the main challenge that we have is we've got a lot of people that are getting into business, but a lot of them are looking at those businesses that are in, in the tangible space. Look, I think you know, I'd agree with what, what you're saying, and I'd, I'd add to that obviously there are macroeconomic factors around the economy and there are certain ecosystem factors around education, um, incentives, etc. What we see is that at an SME level, small business level, there's, there's certain constraints that people are still struggling to get their heads around. So the entrepreneurs in South Africa, as an example, struggle to source finance into their business. They struggle to have that investable business plan. And I think that what we've seen over the course of the last five, 10 years is that there's certain new methodologies and models that are starting to work. If I look at our example for one, we had a vision of five by 505. That's five jobs in 500 business in five years. You know, that's only 2,500 jobs. And we're four years in and we've just cracked it and we, we're happy with that. But we, what we've realized actually in the process is all we've done is build a few models which can now be scaled. So I think we're very much at the start of this curve where we've learned a lot over the last five, 10 years, particularly in the enterprise and supply development space. And I'm hoping to see some of those fairly insignificant numbers become significant through some of the models and innovation that you're seeing around this table and, and in the broader markets. Mm. Tracy? I, I think there is still an, a real opportunity for micro enterprises, but, but in, a, in a low risk kind of way. What's a micro? What, do you, what is yeah, the definition? So a really tiny, a really what, tiny, two less, or three less people. Than, yeah, two or three, less than nine people yeah. in, in, the, in the enterprise. Um, but what Columbus is actually exploring at the moment is having an informal network of these entrepreneurially minded young people that we can actually connect with products and services, take the risk out of it because the, the big factor for young people, you can't afford to fail too often. You don't necessarily have the support of your families. They, they don't want you to take those kinds of risks. So how do we take the risk out of it in the early days? And for us, you know, identifying products and services that can help young people be impactful in their communities for us building on what they've already started in school. So they tackle a range of issues, nutrition, health, all sorts of things you know, what would be some of the products and services that they could actually deliver, get paid for it, mm. um, and from there step into some of the more, yeah. more evolved business models. I think a lot of businesses that we talk to here, David, always talk about a policy certainty that we don't have in uh, South Africa and the kind of impact that can have on the mm. economy. When it comes to the small businesses, do you think that there is enough policy to help you on your current journeys? I think there's a lot of criticism around where policies could be more certain. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of um, spotlight on minimum wage and these sort of things, particularly for a small business context. My sense is that policies are certainly um, one thing. Um, I believe that actually a lot of the building blocks are there and actually you find a lot of entrepreneurs who are resourceful find a way to make policies work for them. So I don't think we should be using policies as an excuse not to crack this entrepreneurial small business uh, growth nut. And um, my sense is that actually you know, with the resources that are available through things like the BE codes and enterprise and supply development, through incentives like the Jobs Fund, we've seen a lot of success stories, we've seen a lot of case studies, and I, I actually think that the psyche around can this work is starting to change in the economy, which is positive. Pivo, last question here, maybe pick up by the others if we've got time, is are we using the guys who have made it? And the other day we were talking about Ian Fuhr, the founder of Sorbet. Now, 10, 12 years ago, Sorbet didn't exist. It's now got hundreds of branches. Uh, he's been taken over, in effect, by Brian Joffe. Uh, so there's a big business there that's now going to get bigger. But he nearly went out of business a couple of years ago. He was really battling. It's so difficult to do this, even if you're very good. So are we using these guys to pass on the examples to mentor? Um, the first challenge is that entrepreneurs are not that recognized in South Africa. <clears throat> The success story is it's not like the Steve Jobs, the Bill Gates that we always read about. Like we don't know the South African but we've got success. Some. We do have them, but they, they're not that idolized like or worshipped, if I can say, like it is in, 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 in other countries. So that, that also is a hindrance. It hinders them from being able to mentor and pass on what, what they've learned and what they have. Because if they're respected and, and given the recognition I think they deserve, mm -hmm. It will actually make it very easy for them to, to help. 
well, scratching the surface of a big issue, but uh, it's very encouraging that these things are going on. Yeah. That's uh, Daniel Hatfield, MD of Edge Growth, Tracy Hacklin, CEO of Columba, and Piwa Nkumbule, who is co-founder and CEO of Riovic.